Please listen to every word I'm about to say. Every word that I'm about to say. People have brought up to me, um, and, and, and it's always been out of love, uh, but I never knew the answer, so I would ignore it. But yesterday, I truly saw the Father's face and I prayed about it, and God, like a flood, opened something up to me, and I want to share it with you guys today. Um, people have mentioned in my comment section that Jesus didn't know everything while he was here on earth. And and that's why he shared Matthew 24, 36 and Mark 13, 32. And, and, and specifically in Matthew 24, 36, it says, No man knows the day or the hour, not the angels, but my Father only. And in Mark 13, 32, it, it, it also mentions neither the Son. Now, I find that interesting because, again, as I've said before, know your audience. Matthew for the Jews, Mark for the lukewarm, and, and Luke for the bride of Christ. Now, notice that phrase is not found in Luke because I think that's obvious, right? Even more so obvious now. Their reply in love has always been Revelations 1.1 which says this, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John. So this is a revelation that God gave Jesus and Jesus gave to his angel to give to John. Go into Philippians chapter one, verses six through eight, and they would say this, and read this, and this is correct. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in a fashion as a man, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And for a very long time I wanted to argue with that, because I knew that my Jesus knew all these things in advance. However, Scripture confirms Jesus didn't know everything because he didn't reveal it to himself. Not all of it. Not while in the flesh. Please listen to every word that I'm about to say to you. John chapter 1 verse 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God and Jesus. Okay? Verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. So again, my whole life, I've been arguing with people, and I've hated that because people have said, well, Revelations 1.1 says Jesus didn't know anything. And still to this day, they claim that Jesus doesn't know until the Father reveals it to him. But 2 Timothy 2.15 says, if we rightly divide Scripture and we seek his face, he will give us the answers that we want and the answers that we need. John 16, 25 says this, These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time comes when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I will show you plainly of the Father. In verse 26, And that day you shall ask in my name, and I say unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came out of God, and I came forth from the Father, and am into the world, again I leave the world and go unto my Father. So perhaps while he was here in the flesh, he didn't know everything. But we continue reading. Because we also understand that he was all man, yet all God. So he kept some things hidden from himself, but Holy Spirit led him the way that he was supposed to speak. Again, Jesus being that perfect example, and that's what we're supposed to be to the rest of the world. So when people quote that phrase, Matthew 24, 36, and Mark 13, 32, perhaps to some extent they were right, but they're also missing just a little bit. But we, the bride, understand the reference. We understand the Galilean wedding tradition. We understand the Feast of Trumpets. So in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, it reads this, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. It is not for you to know the times of the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. Jesus had not yet ascended into heaven permanently at this time. Do you understand? 
then it goes on to explain his ascension into heaven. And we understand that the first fruits had already been fulfilled. Okay, you can look back at that previous videos for the first fruits comparison there. First fruits has already been fulfilled. Pentecost was coming. Jesus is now ascending to the throne in heaven. In verses 9 through 11 in Acts chapter 1. Here's the point. Here's the point. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 again. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. John was given a revelation. Yes, he was. <laughs> However, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus ascended. And as soon as he ascended, that knowledge was given to Jesus. Jesus knew the traditions because he was raised in the traditions. He understood the Moedims because he was raised in those Moedims. He understood the feast and all of those things because he was raised in that. So, of course, he would understand the references. So, when he ascended back into heaven in Acts chapter 1, in Acts chapter 9, he gave Paul the first revelation. And Paul spoke it to us, the Gentiles. Paul was told to share the gospel and the mysteries to the Gentiles. 13, 46 through 49. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, talking to the Jews, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us saying, I have set thee to bear, be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard of this, they were glad and glorified the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. And verse 52, And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 26 through 28 and 29. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, us, to whom God would make known what the riches of his glories of this mystery among the Gentiles, us, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, the rapture of the church, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Paul was given the first revelation. And Paul spoke to the Gentiles and made all of these mysteries known to us. So when we read scripture, we have to understand who's the author. When was it written? And, and we have to pray and seek the Father's face. I was so confused when I seen this. And then I thought, hey, why don't I ask God for help and ask him to reveal it to me? And the Father has. So Jesus spoke the way he did because he knew the traditions of that time. Galilean wedding traditions. And he knew of the Feast of Trumpets. But he might not have known everything in that moment. However, glory to God, it was revealed to Paul. And Paul shared it to the Gentiles. Us. And because we searched scripture out, we can find these things out if we'll just read and ask for understanding. Closing 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 8 through 12. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not only the gospel of God, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how holy and justly and unblamely we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As you know how we exalted and comforted and charged every one of you, as the Father does his children, that you would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus, for Paul. Thank you for the mysteries being revealed. Amen.